Okay, so let us start with this chart where we left last in the last lecture. We were discussing about the Maya and uh, <clears throat> Maya, which is the power of the Brahm, the Shakti of the Brahm, and which conceals or veils the Brahm itself. And in the light of this, how this Maya, the whole uh, the process, what we see, the world that we see, it appears to us. So there is a misapprehension or the non-apprehension of the things. There is a projection which is happening. Projection of something which we know onto projection on something which we don't know. And we spoke about the example of a snake and the rope, where you see the rope or then you are projecting the properties of a snake on the rope and then you, your reactions are as if you are seeing the snake. Okay, you get into the fear and you start sweating. It's because of that projection, misapprehension of the reality. The reality is rope, but what we are perceiving what we are considering is, it is a snake. <clears throat> Same thing is, this Brahm, this entire Jagat is a Brahm, but we are seeing it in a, uh, as a, a different objects, right? Different people, different relationships. We are seeing and we are projecting because that's what we know. That's what our mind has been trained for. And mind is projecting that, those properties and we are considering that as the, as the real. We spoke about the three existence, the uh, Vyavaharik Sat, the, something which you are seeing in the waking state of the consciousness, something which you are experiencing. 
then there is a pratibhasit sat that is the illusory existence which is in the dream state of the consciousness okay that is the illusory thing and we did we spoke about the story of janak how janak <clears throat> saw the dream and in the dream he saw himself as a beggar so in the vyavaharik sat he is a king in illusory jagat illusory world he is a beggar and he gets confused what is truth who am i i am a beggar or am i a king and then his guru yagval comes and tells him you are neither uh, a king you are nor you are a beggar you are something else and then something else transports into the that realization happens into the parmarthik sat which is the transcendental existence the unconditional things where there is no projection over there and when there is no projection no name no form no jagat the entire jagat finishes over there what remains is that single entity that is brahm which is infinite which is everywhere that's where the how the guru yagval ke is telling to the telling to janak okay. now this world is something which we perceive and we made this world as a finite world this is an infinite world so this isha upanishad says a very famous prayer what we do every day ओम पूर्णमदः पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते व्हाट इट इज टेलिंग इज ओम पूर्णमदः अदः मींस दैट दैट इज इनफाइनाइट दैट इज कंप्लीट ओके ओम पूर्णमिदं इदं मींस दिस दैट is also finite uh, that is also infinite this is also infinite this means this world the world which we are seeing as a vyavaharik jagat or the world which we are seeing in the illusory existence that is also infinite now you will wonder how this world is infinite that upanishad is telling that is infinite this world is also infinite because you see that anything which goes through the creation sustenance and transformation any object what we see in this world the plants the humans whatever we see they go through these three things and they can be described in the three dimensions of space cause and time these they can be associated in those three coordinates this creation that means the space time and uh, cause they are existing before any creation is taking place these three things are existing okay so how is it this possible then something which is existing already okay that means that is proving that this is the infinite nature of the world world is also infinite because cause these things they they are they are all already existing before that so you keep on tracing back every object these three things will always be there so this nature of this world is also infinite what we are seeing around us the vyavaharik sat the vyavaharik existence that is there so this infinite om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate this infinite this world finite looking world but this it is also infinite it has come out of that infinite that means that brahm this world has come out of that brahm purnat purnamudachyate it has come out of that पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवा वशिष्यते सो यू टेक इनफाइनाइट आउट ऑफ इनफाइनाइट व्हाट रिमेंस इज इनफाइनाइट ओके सो इट्स लाइक 
whatever water you can draw from the ocean, ocean will always remain infinite. So if ocean is the Brahm and that water you are seeing, uh, you take out of that, any amount of water you withdraw, ocean will remain there. It will, its boundaries will not change. The same is like Brahm is also there. But because of our limited knowledge, because of our ignorance, we are making infinite as finite. We are perceiving it as a finite. Finite means something which has the boundary, some things which has division. It is our ignorance which is doing all that. In reality, there are no divisions. That is what this mantra is telling. This prayer is telling about this. There is this fundamental existence is there and that's the only existence which is there, which is Brahma. Rest all is the projection. Now, this is also interesting. We have already spoken about the three gunas. These are the attributes of Maya. The, the Maya is the Shakti of Brahm, the power of the Brahm. And it has got some attributes associated with it. Some gunas or some qualities executed uh, uh, are there. Now, when Maya is working through the Rajas guna, Rajo guna is the guna which causes the movement, which causes the action, which causes the agitation in the mind. Mind is like a pond of the water, right? In the water at night, the water will be calm. You drop a stone, there will be waves. So this Rajoguna, Rajas Guna creates the agitation in the mind. The, the power of Maya is now actually become the converted into the modified into the power of agitation. It is causing agitation. That's the Rajas Guna which is there. Okay. And <clears throat> these agitations means desires are born in the mind and then one desire is giving rise to the other desire and that's how the hundreds and thousands of desires and thoughts are going on in the mind. This whole world is now created. Okay. In the, the mind is creating this whole world with this, all these desires, okay, which is there. You are creating it, everything. That is the Rajas Guna, which is functioning over there. Maya, working through the Rajas Guna, is creating the agitation into the mind. Now, when agitation is happening, there needs a direction also. Okay. Now, if what happens when the agitation happens, you are chasing your goals, you are chasing your ambitions, your dreams, uh, then you become tired after some time. Because you, you are these agitations, you are chasing your dreams because you want peace, you want love, unconditioned, eternal, infinite love. And due to that vacuum, you are chasing it. So you, you keep achieving certain things in your life. Eventually, you know, you you, you, you again ask for more and more and more and your chase goes on. At a point comes where you give up, okay? When you realize that this is futile, what I am doing. You start thinking, you pause and start reflecting. Am I doing the right thing? Okay, so then you become tired. Your body becomes tired. Your mind becomes exhausted. And then it lapses into tamas. The tamas takes over. Tamas means inactivity. Rajas means activity. Tamas is the break. What you see there on the picture, accelerator is the Rajas, which is accelerating your activities. Break, which is making you inactive. Now, the, 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 the property of Tamas is it will envelop the light of intellect. It will cover the intellect with the darkness of the ignorance. And in that darkness, you are, the agitations are going on. That means you have no direction. You have no goal where to go. In the darkness of the ignorance, you are just running and running and running. So these tamas and rajas, the combination of these, they drive us crazy. 
Maya working through these, exhibiting through these two gunas drives us crazy throughout the life. In this whole haphazard thing, right, you know, our life just goes on like that. We create, we sustain, we die, we create more vasanas in this process. And as more vasanas come, we create our baggage and then we trans, we keep on migrating between life and death, life and death like that. That is how this whole cycle goes on because tamas and rajas effect are there. Okay. So on the, on the leftmost column, you see that this chart I have prepared that the power of the Maya when working through the intellect, that power is called as Jnana Shakti, power to decide, power to discriminate. When Maya working through the mind, that is the Ichha Shakti, that power is modified into Ichha Shakti, the power to desire the things. And then this is working through the body, power of Maya working through the body, that is the power of action, Kriya Shakti. Okay. These are the powers which we exhibit and, and these, we will lead our life with these three things. Okay. So when the power of, when the Rajas Kuna is there and so the, in that the Jnana Shakti, the power to decide is working in the worldly affairs. We have the intellect, we are analyzing, we have analytical mind, our buddhi's intelligence is working. But in where it is working? In the worldly affairs. It is working. And then it is receiving the rewards and the awards that this world has to offer. Okay. So that, that ambitions get fulfilled. You receive success. You also receive failures. That is whole thing going on. Our intelligence is working because when the Rajas Guna uh, is working, is, is dominant over there. When tamas is there, this jnana shakti is totally covered as I said. Then there is no clarity. What to do? There is no goal in front of you. So agitations are happening. Rajas is also powering the engine. But clarity is not there which way to go. And then we start running in all directions in the life. Okay. But when sattva comes, Sattva is the force. Sattva is the pure intellect. It is not that Sattva is not there. Sattva is also there. But what is happening is some impurity has come in, in the form of Rajas and Tamas. Like the water is there on earth. But due to impurities, that water is not pure. You take out the impurities let the water go through the process of purification, then the pure water will come out. Similarly, sattva is already there. You have that sattva in, in you, but the impurities have kind of taken over and those impurities are causing the misapprehension and the non-apprehension of the reality because of rajas and tamas, these two. So when rajas and tamas are reduced, gradually reduced through the process of the spiritual processes, you, whatever you do, your spiritual processes, you purify your personality. Then the subtle intellect is there. That intellect, that power helps you decide what is real and what is unreal. Okay. So that's how the Jnana Shakti working through the, in the influence of three gunas. When it comes to power of desire, Ichha Shakti, when Rajas is there, you have the desires of the worldly objects. You are ambitious. You want to attain so many things in your life. You want to attain wealth. You want to attain prosperity. You want to attain uh, name, fame. Those kind of desires are there because of the Rajas is, is working over there. A tamas will be more of a daydreamer. He may have the goal. He may be thinking about, I want this, I want that. But he will uh, have no goal, no clarity. 
he will do perform no action he is inactive no purushartha he is putting there okay. but when tamas and rajas they are eliminated when sattva is there this power of desire becomes more refined the desire for god is there intense desire for realization mumuksh takes place that liberation desire for liberation drives towards the the goal of your life till then if the rajas and tamas are there this mumuksh will never be born this intense desire for liberation will never be born so it is important that this effect of both tamas and rajas reduces in the body similarly power to act kriya shakti of the maya when it is working through the body and when there is a rajas in the body the actions performed will be attached active action desire full actions are there <clears throat> the actions which are creating attachments for you you are running behind name you are running behind status when you get the status you get attached to the status when you get pa power you become attached to the power and you are not ready to leave the power you become possessive of that so rajas guna is creating attachments actions attach attached actions it rajas is there tamas no action inactive person is a day dreamer not putting any efforts okay lethargic person that kind of person is there okay even the lower this is the lower state than rajas third is the when the sattva is there the action the kriya shakti is detached active you are doing the actions but you are unattached to the actions unattached to the results which are coming out of that action the actions results are not disturbing your peace of mind okay those are there so this is how the maya and the trigunas they effect on the personality that overall thing that happens now this is the we talked about the causal body when we are looking in the inward thing how the uh, ignorance or the maya is working we have causal body subtle body and the gross body so these when maya works with these three gunas it becomes conditioned so the pure consciousness now has become conditioned consciousness and because of this conditioned consciousness this jagat world is formed in front of you the subtle body and the gross body of you which is your jagat which is there okay which is coming out of your causal body through that so like that there are billions of people billions of animals billions of special species for each species there exists a world there exists a jagat of their own and you then transact into your the jagat which you have created your mind has created if there is a mind there is a jagat if there is a no mind there is no jagat so when you go back into the uh, sushupti state there is no mind over there there is no jagat no world exists for you the pratibhasit sat is not there the vyavaharik sat is also not there for you in the sushupti in the deep sleep state there is no action happening there you are in the causal just in the field of causal body at that point again causal body is not the truth deep sleep state is not the true state of con consciousness it is still the conditioned consciousness that's how the you combined all the jagat all the people all the people have their own world put all the world summation of it the super set of it is the macro is the vishwa jagat which is there 
and then combine the causal body of every organism, every species that forms the macro worm, the Hiranyagarbha, which is there. Hiranyagarbha it is called as. The womb of gold, golden womb, it is called as. Golden womb. From where this whole creation, Purnamidam, this whole world has is getting created. This infinite is coming from that infinite. That womb is called the Hiranyagarbha. These are all terminologies which are used in Vedanta. So I was just trying to uh, explain you so that you, when you are reading Vedanta Darshan, these terminologies you can understand and, and then you will be able to understand the concept what Vedanta is trying to say. This is the highest concept. This is the highest concept. So it takes time. We have to do Shravan, Manan continuously to understand these things. Our mind, intellect, just by Shravan cannot do that. Okay. Cannot comprehend this properly. So the Nirgun Brahm becomes the Sagun Brahm. Once it goes, becomes conditioned consciousness, the Sagun Brahm has taken place. Brahm with attributes assigned to it. So like you are Brahm with attributes. You see your parents, your family, they are all Brahm with attributes attached to them. Okay. Once these attributes are removed, these conditions are removed by raising your level of consciousness, you see that it is a Nirgun Brahm, which is everywhere there, everywhere it is there. That's the reality. That's the only existence which is there. It is like you have the, uh, you have the uh, clay, from the clay, the various pots are made. So what are the pots? Pots are nothing but clay with the attributes. Okay. You have given a shape, you have given a name, you have given a form that becomes the attribute to the clay. And then you are calling it as a pot, but the end of the day, it is not pot. It is the clay. Okay. These pots are giving you the expression that they are different, but they are all made up of the same clay. That is the Nirgun Brahm, which is there. So same concept is here. So then the question comes, if Jagat is Mithya, if the Jagat is the Maya created by the Maya, <clears throat> then what is Brahm? What is Satya? What is consciousness? Am I Mithya or am I something else? And why this misapprehension of truth is there? And we spoke about why the misapprehension of truth is there because of the Gunas. Rajoguna is causing the misapprehension. Tamoguna is causing the non-apprehension of the truth. You cannot apprehend at all in tamas. It's a darkness, total darkness, which is there. So then the question arises, and then we get into the next subject of topic of understanding the Brahm, which is our, which is your true nature. Now in Upanishads, <coughs> various definitions have been given. Uh, in, about the about Brahm, uh, very popular ones are I've uh, captured here. Brahm is nothing but it is Sat Chit Anand. It is a pure existence. That is the Paramarthic Sat. It is the pure consciousness. That is the unconditioned consciousness. The fourth state of consciousness, which is Turiya, and this is the pure bliss. None of this is divisible. This is infinite. Infinite existence, infinite consciousness is infinite. Bliss is infinite. That is the Brahm. That is your true nature, which is there. In Vivek Chudamani, Shankaracharya says, Brahma Satya, Jagat Mithya, Jeevo Brahmaiva Napara. That means there is no difference between Jeev and Brahm. Jeevatma is Paramatma. 
This jeev itself is a Brahm. It is not different from that. That's Vivek Chodamani. This is the revelation that Sankaracharya is making. Sarva Khal Vidam Brahm. All this is Brahm. Whatever is their creation around you, everything is Brahm. Chandokya Upanishad declares that. Satasya Satyamiti Prana Vai Satyam Brihadaranik Upanishad uh, says that this is the truth of the truth. If this breath is the truth, prana means this breath. You consider this prana is the truth, then Brahma is the truth of the truth. It is the truth of the truth. It is the truth of the prana. Okay. That is the eventual truth which is there. The only truth. Ekam Eva Dvityam Brahm Chandokya Upanishad again, again says Brahm is without a second. There is no second to it. It is only one. There is no second truth about it. There is only one truth. So various Upanishads have given definition. Neti Neti is also asked. What is this? Somebody says, ask. Is this Brahm? Are you Brahm? Neti Neti. Not that. Not that. As long as those attributes are there. Neti, 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 neti. Reject, reject, reject. Negate, negate, negate. Then what remains eventually? The unconditioned thing. After all the attributes have dropped is the Brahm which says. So neti, neti is also a very popular way of in, the, in Vedanta. Brahm has been described. <coughs> Now there are four Vedas, each Vedas, from each Vedas, the Upanishads are associated. And these are the statements of identity. Each Veda is making the identity. It is kind of uh, introducing you to your own identity, your true identity. You now we say that an identity crisis is going on in my life. People say identity crisis. So identity crisis will happen only when you are considering a fake identity as your identity, because only a fake identity can go through crisis. Infinite identity, the true identity, how can it go through the crisis? It is beyond any crisis. It is eternal. It never changes. There won't be any crisis in that when we are talking in terms of true identity. When we are considering our personality, our these body, mind and intellect as our identity, of course, they will go through crisis at some points in the life because they are going through wear and tear. They are limited in nature. Okay, they, they have their own limits. So it will go through crisis beyond those limits. But these statements of the Vedas are introducing ourselves to our true identity and these are called as Mahavakyas. The essence of each Veda is that Mahavakya <clears throat> unanimously it is coming. The, the, the final essence which comes out of the Veda. You know, whatever, like Vedas have so many hymns, so many verses, but what comes out of is the main essence is called the Mahavakya. Okay. So, Pragyanam Brahm, what it says, Pragyanam Brahm, this consciousness, Pragya means consciousness, Pragyanam also means the supreme knowledge, Jnanam means knowledge, Pra means the supreme. This supreme knowledge of everything is Brahm, what you see around you. This consciousness is Brahm, it says. This is taken by the, from the Aitre Upanishad of Rig Veda. This Mahavakya is there. Now, when we are a small child, when you are a small child, right? When you are growing up, you see that you have a place of worship in your house. Your parents are giving you, teaching you uh, some rituals, right? They say, okay, take this prayer. Every day morning, you go and recite this prayer in the temple or whatever uh, tradition you worship uh, in the house. They make you do that. 
so you think that the god is there in the temple of my house at that when we are small so we think god is there so anything we have to talk to god we go into that place of worship the temple of the house and then we ask for our desires or whatever we we do that that is the mindset that is the mindset we have now as you are growing okay as you are growing then you learn that god is everywhere your teachers will tell you this plant is also a god some festivals will come where you are doing the worshiping the plants some festivals will come where you worship the animals and say that this god is in the animals also god is in the earth also god is there in the rain also rain god uh, cloud god okay that's how we are taught and then we are said okay this god is everywhere that is the pragyanam brahm whatever knowledge you have whatever things you are seeing around that has the that is the brahman that is the god of that's how the learning happens so this is the lakshana vakya this statement is called as the statement of characteristics characteristics are of the brahm are being defined in the creation around us so this pragyanam brahm is the lakshana vakya it is called it is it has been given that okay now that next comes is the tat tvamasi that the word chandokya upanishad or from samveda says tat tvamasi that the art so here the story of shwetaketu comes okay shwetaketu who is the son of uh, uddalak aruni uddalak is his father so shwetaketu is a child father uh, sends him to the gurukul to learn about the culture to learn about the vedas get all the knowledge and come back full of knowledge so shwetaketu studies goes and studies for 12 years in gurukula and then comes back after completing his degree and then shwetaketu is under the proud is there okay i have learned everything uh, everything i have learned the vyakaran the grammar the sanskrit the vedas the upanishad i have got all the knowledge okay that arrogance also comes into that i know everything shweta kam ke tu says comes back and tells to his father now father sees that you know that arrogance has come in my child that ego has come in my child that means there is something missing in his education he didn't get so he asks the son o somya o son o shweta ke tu what have you learned there in gurukula i have learned everything father you ask me anything i know everything i can tell you everything about it. then father asked the question okay he asked the question what is that by knowing which everything can be known what is that by listening to this all things with which can be heard and which cannot be heard also can be heard now this question puzzles shweta ketu shweta ketu goes blank what is that father is asking by knowing something i can know everything what is that what can be that so his ego starts to break over there and then he realizes that father no my teachers have not told me this my education is incomplete i consider you as my guru please tell me what is that by knowing which i can know everything what is that by hearing which i can hear all the speeches which are there tell me oh father i beg you tell me oh my guru and then aruni uddalak starts telling to to his son to shweta ketu and then he says that look 
this the world what you see is made up of fire it is made up of earth it is made up of water okay three panchikaran so it is he is talking about the three elements which can be perceived by the five five senses here he is not talking about space and thing they are part within the fire here so he say that you are not a finite gross body okay this terrestrial world is a sat it has one fundamental sat and then these three things are there which evolved from that sat from that truth okay the ekoham bahusyami that will power of the brahm that has created these three elements which are there fire uh, and then water and then food that is the earth and then this he says that when you eat the food one part of the food becomes the waste what you excrete one part of the food it becomes your flesh and the subtle part of the food becomes your mind similarly one part of the water becomes urine one part of the water becomes prana the breath which you are taking and then one part of the water the subtle part of the water becomes the prana okay so one part becomes urine one part becomes the blood and then one part becomes the prana the subtle part becomes the prana and then when you take this tejas the fire the uh, one part becomes your bone one part becomes your muscle middle part and the subtle part becomes your speech so all this mind pran speech whatever you see this it has come out of that sat and that sat is you tat tvamasi okay udalak it is a bouncer for udalak uh, for uh, shweta ketu goes over the top doesn't understand and then he says oh father please explain me more i haven't got anything out of it what you said i am not understanding it the father says guru says oh swamya oh shesta ketu like you churn the curd the butter is the subtle part of the curd which is which is already there in the curd it it comes out in the milk it comes out the subtle part of the milk okay the butter is coming out out of that similarly this world made up of fire thing and all it has come out of that sat only and that sat is you oh my son tat tvamasi again he is telling tat tvamasi that the word and you are that sat again shweta ketu is not understanding anything father explain me more give me more examples i'm still not getting what you are trying to say like honeys honey bees they collect honey from various flowers and then they all come and deposit the honey in the one beehive then you cannot separate which honey belongs to which flower over there so that is the sat this beehive is that sat from where they, is there that is the unity of that diversity that sat is you shweta ketu tat tvamasi father give me more example i am getting little bit of it but i am still not getting the full out, out of it oh samya like how these rivers come and merge into the ocean then in the ocean the there is no individuality of the river which is there this ocean is the sat of all the rivers this ocean is the existence final existence the fundamental existence from where all rivers are born and then all rivers do can they go back this is the sat this is that existence you are that sat tat tvamasi okay so shetaketu again says give me some one more example son bring a fruit father says bring a fruit shetaketu brings the fruit now break this fruit Shweta Ketu breaks the fruit. 
what do you see inside it shweta ketu says i see the seed okay break the seed now shweta ketu breaks the seed what do you see inside i don't see anything that is the subtle part of the seed is that sat that is the foundation from which this seed is born and from this seed this fruit is born like that that sat is you tat tvamasi that's how chando in this uh, chando ke upanishad this through this story tat tvamasi is tat tvamasi is being explained okay now when we connect to our 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 own self right when we are looking at pragyanam brahm when god is everywhere okay we also go for education we complete our education we we get a degree and then we think that we are the most intelligent people on the earth that's what man is thinking today i know everything i have become most intelligent i know all the things which happens but and that arrogance that ego drives me doing certain actions and i stray away from the meaning of the life the main goal of the life and that's where the guru comes a guru is needed and then guru introduces you to your identity tat tvamasi this is the statement of advice upadesh vakya guru is giving the upadesh it is telling you see you have not realized you have only done the shravan at this point guru has only told you what is your identity in pragyanam brahm you learned that god is everywhere now guru is telling that god is you tat tvamasi you are also that oh i am also that okay you become surprised you become stunned at that point but that is only the shravan which has happened the manan is yet to happen okay and that manan is the third one i am atma brahm okay i am atma brahm this is pure consciousness this self is pure consciousness then you say okay this self myself is god myself is god this is the on practice vakya statement of practice you are doing the abhyas vakya abhyasa of it i am atma brahm i am atma brahm that is what mandukya upanishad of atharva veda says this mahavakya i am atma brahm i am atma brahm. and then you practice guru gives you the practice guru gives you the anushthan chanting uh, uh, various techniques where guru is telling you i am atma brahm i am atma brahm keep focus on that and with that practice you are getting closer to the reality you are getting closer to the nij dhyasan so shravan is done now manan is happening the nij dhyasan finally comes the statement of declaration statement of experience aham brahmasmi brahadaranya upanishad of yajurveda declares i am the brahm now i know my true identity and that's how you reach there each vakya at different stages is taking you eventually to the i am brahm stage okay where you discover your true identity you have got the understand to your true knowledge over there okay that's how the four vakyas the vedas the essence of vedas is taking us to the to our true nature to our true identity so we are now almost closing to the time i know this was a very vast broad subject uh, difficult to comprehend uh, but again we have to keep reflecting on this subject the more we reflect the more we practice the more it will kind of reveal in that sense so i request you please reflect on what we have discussed today more questions will come more revelations will be made in your mind and then we can have a very fruitful discussion next sunday on the same subject 
till then i will bid goodbye to you i wish a very happy days ahead we will do the shanti part ओडमेदम पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओ शांति शांति Shanti Thank you Thank you Anurag ji wonderful session Thank you sir Thank you Anurag ji Thank you Thank you Anurag ji